We all know how well things are going for the Lions in the conference championship. What's this for the first time in 30 plus years? Um, and, but this is a business as well. Rob G, uh, tee us up on, on golf and his contract. Sure. So Jared Goff is in the NFC Championship game. Everyone's excited about it. Fred Warner called him one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL this week. He's bigging him up at the press conference. So as a result, you'd expect then that Jared Goff would like to be paid as one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL because... Now remember, he got a big deal with the Rams. He did, with the Rams, and then was traded. Do you you remember what it was? It was four for 134. Yeah, he got paid. So it's not like he never got a contract. Right, right. So... After this season in 2024, he will be entering the last year of his contract, which is 2024, and he has $0 in guaranteed money left on his contract. Now, his cap hit isn't that big, only $31 million next season, but you guys all know nobody worth their salt enters into a season as a lame duck coach, quarterback, what have you. So you can right. expect he's going to be looking for a new contract this offseason. I mean, Rob, if I was the Lions, and I I like Jared Goff, and I'm sure they like him. They have to. He's done great. Um, I wouldn't bring up the conversation. (laughs) Look at Chris. He's great. He did a great job of the line, but I'm not bringing it up. That last year is going to be, you know, I don't know what the date is, whether it's in March, whether it's in the summer. But at some point, it's going to be guaranteed. He's going to get paid for his last year. My point is I'd love to see one more year of him, but – his agent, if he's worth his salt, which I'm sure he is, is going to bring it up. And, Rob, at the end of the day, I got to pay the man. If he's you're the played line, well. Chris, he's right, gotten you can't them, play right? around. I got to like, pay like, the man. Right. What, what, what would you be doing? Okay, you waited all this time to finally get win some playoff yep. games. You're in the NFC Championship game. And then the first thing you're going to do is be like, no, we're not paying the quarterback. Not, right. Okay. Want to start all over? Want another – 1957, like, like it doesn't make yep. sense. And it doesn't mean, we talked about it, Chris, the, the division is only going to get tougher, I think, as you go forward with, with Green well, Bay. Yeah, we know the Packers are going to be better. Okay, and then there's and a chance of Caleb Bears, right. with the Bears. They finish strong. Maybe they got some players. You got a better, little better quarterback. I'm just saying. And then Minnesota, you know, I, I don't know where they are because they're not going to have they're going to have a different quarterback. I don't know where they really fit in. But anyway, my point is, they got a good coach. Don't mess around with this. Don't like. I mean, I get it. You don't have to give them the, the make them the highest paid quarterback in the league, but you well, got to take they care may. of the guy. That you know what I mean? Like, no, I'm not doing that. So that you know, you know how it works, Rob. Everybody, you know, generally, a guy becomes the highest paid. And so that that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I definitely would love to sign him at a favorable number, but whatever the case, he's getting 50 plus. Now, the interesting thing for them, and I know his average is what about 34 million a year over that deal, which at that time was huge. Now, not so much. Right. But it it isn't like they've had him on his rookie deal, right? They've had to build around him, you know from the get-go with him taking up a lot of the salary cap. And so that won't be as big of uh, an adjustment for them. But it's tough, you know, but at the end of the day, you have to have a quarterback. Everybody can't have Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. And so I I think I would hold my breath and sign him. uh, because. And if they lose, to me, Rob, this game doesn't really have any bearing on it because – I mean, they're expected to lose. They're supposed to lose to, uh, you know, to the 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 Niners. So right. that really shouldn't. I, have I, I agree, Chris. I agree because even if they lose, it doesn't matter what happens. They've uh, done enough this year yep. to make you feel good about Jared Goff. That the trade that you made uh, worked out. Even though Stafford went on and got his Super Bowl, we got that. But but the Lions made out as well. And you got Jared Goff. He's not an old guy. He's got a few more good years left in him. And you want and you don't want to upset the apple cart. Don't make it cause because Chris, they've raised ticket prices like sixty percent. So yeah, that's what you know what I mean? Do. Like they like they're cashing <laughs> yeah. out, right? On it. Lion, yep. I got Lions fans, friends, 
Chris, who have canceled their season tickets for next year. Really? Yeah, because Even though they're playing well. They, that's what they just, do when you win. They're so mad, though, that like they've been fans and bought season tickets for 20 years when the product was bad. And and not that they don't expect a you know for them to raise right. the ticket prices, but to gouge them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The first bit of success, you know, and it's sixty percent, like it's something tough. like that. Like like that's a big increase. This is the Midwest, Chris. You lived in the Midwest. These are people who are average Joes. Yep. Don't have a lot of disposable income like that. They're not eating out at fancy restaurants all the time. I'm not saying all, but you know well, what I'm and saying. To your point, Rob, they supported them through the, through the no lean reason. time. I don't know. Were they selling out? They have their they were, fans? They were close to sell out. You know what I mean? But there weren't empty seats or like empty right. sections. Right. Uh, well, everyone wasn't a sellout, but but big crowds. Always, yeah. Chris. Always. It's the 20 years I was you know, covering and being there all the time. People supported the Lions. And I don't, I don't expect the Lions to – to not try to, you know, increase their revenue. I get that once you start winning and all that, but not to gouge or, or, or close out or push out all those fans who, who've been supporting you all along. Do you feel like, Rob, that this is the Lions are building something? I mean, now they've obviously, you know, they got into the Final Four, so they've obviously gone a long way already. But do you see this as something that's going to go on for the next few years? Or, you know, there are always teams that, you know, they were – I mean, look at Minnesota, and I know Kirk Cousins got hurt, but they were only 4-4 four and four when he got hurt. But remember, they were 13-3 and three the but year But remember, before, they like, won like five, five or so games. Remember when he got hurt, they went on a run. And then uh, who was the quarterback who came in the, the – uh, Rocket science. I mean, the um, astronaut who died, oh, yeah, who couldn't yeah, finish yeah. the job. You remember? Yeah. Then he was exposed. But yeah, they, remember they, they, weren't, had, they weren't going to go very far. No, no. But yeah, I'm just I saying. But they, but they but won about is, four or five games in a row. Do you think that they, the Lions, are building something where they're going to be, you know, one of those top teams in the mix for the next, you know, three, four years, or do you think this could be a one-off? I, I'm just not. I'm not sure yet. I, I really – I'm not sure. In the NFL, you know how it goes, Chris. There's teams that sometimes, as you say, come out of nowhere one year, and then do they sustain it? Is it a, is it a one-time deal? You know, do you fall back in the pack the next year? Do you uh, – people not – maybe not take you as seriously the first time you really step up there, and then once you do, they change the way they look at you. You know, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm not – I don't think they're going all the way backwards, but do I think they're going to win the division every year and it's it's the Lions' division to lose? I'm not there yet. No, look, like I said, I think Green Bay is going to be a Super Bowl contender next year. But I also think the Lions will be. Like, I think this is legit. I think they're going to be good. Dan Campbell's done a great job there. You know, the offense is among the best in the league. The defense gives up a ton of passing yards. In in part, Stafford had almost three seventy, and then yeah, Baker, Baker had three fifty. Yeah, but some of that, I, I don't even want to say in part, like it's fifty percent. But some of that, Rob, is because they're so good against the run that te- teams can't run on them, so they throw the ball a lot. But they don't give up a ton of touchdowns. And things like that, but they do give up a ton of passing yards. Um, but I think they'll even get better on that side of the ball. So I think they're here to stay. You know, I, I'm not predicting a Super Bowl necessarily, but I do think they're going to be one of those top teams. Like next year, I think they're going to be one of the top teams again in the NFC and have a chance to come out of the NFC. Um, 